Welcome to Spirit Soul Sense. We're talking Kokido and Jesus. It's Christmas time. So Jesus is the homie and really I mean that in every sense. He's my friend, <laughs> person I confide in, person, being energy, essence that I call on when I'm feeling like I need that extra oomph to get through life or to get something. Um, definitely what I called on when I was doing my fast because I realized I could not do this by myself. I need that God energy flowing through me. And so I believe a lot of things about God. Let me just put this into context. So I see God as big G God. Big G God is like the equivalent to ocean God. And we are little G God, equivalent to a wave in the ocean. So I am a wave in the ocean, I am the ocean, but I'm not really, right? Because we can see a wave, we can identify what a wave is. It's not the whole ocean. I think God is the whole ocean and I think we are the waves in the ocean. So we are. God, listen, listen. If you feel confused or you feel like I'm talking nonsense, just just stick it out, okay? Just, just watch my thought process and maybe you'll find a glimmer of something. You know, you clicked on this video for a reason. You're watching this video for a reason. My favorite definitions about God are vague. They're very open. I don't think God can be, um, you know, packaged neatly in a box. I don't think God can be packaged neatly in a book. I don't think that's how it works. Uh, so I'm not Christian. I don't identify as Christian, but I have a profound respect for religions, major, non-major. And I grew up in the church. And so I know a lot about the Bible. I've read the whole thing. I was born again when I was like 12. Um, I've reread Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in adulthood. There is very little that someone else can tell me about the Bible that I don't already know myself. I love the Bible. I love Christianity. I'm not Christian. I love Jesus. Uh, but in another video, I say not in the same way that Christians do because and I'm going to make the distinction here um, and how I got to where I am with Jesus is the homie, right? I'm not saying Jesus is my Lord and Savior because I don't believe that. I'm saying Jesus is the homie. I really, really feel like I have a close relationship with Jesus in that he is right there on God level energy and has been the example here on earth for how we can live our life. I think he is aspirational. I think it's very, very difficult to live your life thinking you are going to be exactly like Jesus or to think you are going to be perfect like Jesus. I think it's a model that we should follow, uh, but I don't think we should beat ourselves up for not being able to ascend to that higher level. I think our souls, I, I think our souls reincarnate. And so I think the soul that I have, that's an old soul. And so I'm a little bit further along in the journey is going to one day reach transcendence and transcendence is peace it's like jesus christ energy god it's it's like there's nothing nothing can stop you um no obstacle can like be in your way you are never suffering right light you understand everything there is to know about life and that everything happens for a reason and so you worry not okay i'm not there and I don't expect to be there in my lifetime. I expect that I will grow and grow and grow and die and so come back as someone else. Uh, but I, I really don't expect to be Jesus here in this lifetime. So how did I get to these thoughts about Jesus? As a kid, I was definitely very, very curious. And so I was always sort of skeptical about this God character. So reading the bible um all those bible stories as kids um all those moses abraham listen i am like who is this angry guy and why is he so mean to everyone why is he so mean that's all i feel like in all the stories i read in the old testament i'm just like why is dude so mean why he's so mean why he really needed homie to like build an ark? Why he drawn everybody? Why he... Listen, I was like, why is he so mean? That's me as a kid. Why is he so mean? Getting into like the New Testament God character, 
and Jesus and things like feeling like they make sense. Um, I still had a lot of questions, particularly John 3, 16, okay? <laughs> no one can enter through the Father but through me. I definitely was like, so what happens to everyone else? Like, what happens to people who just don't believe that? I think I went through, like, what happens to other religions, like uh, Muslims, what happens to Hindus, um, and then I was like, well, what happens to people who don't even believe in God at all? And then what happens to people who are very kind and giving and really, really great people who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, um, but this person who steals and lies and does terrible things to people has accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. You're really trying to tell me one goes to heaven and one does not go to heaven? I was not convinced and the older I got, the more questions I had. And so the way I feel about Jesus is if you ask a question, you will get an answer when it comes to finding out information about Jesus. I did a lot of research on other religions once I got into adulthood and did not did not go heavy, did not convert into anything, just read a lot of different things about how Eastern religions, you know, organize, how some of them don't even label a God. Um, they sort of talk about being, which is like capital being, it's like God is. I feel like being and God is are the same thing. It's It's just like, encompasses everything there's no one word that can really capture like the essence of what god is and i feel like i have tried not to use the word god but it's really hard for me because when i say god i i have a mental image of god that's not what you might mental image god to be so um i used to think about god as angry used to think about God as um, a being, right? The small b, a being. And I, I don't think about God like that anymore. Um, when I say God, I in my mind, it's like universe, spirit, energy. That like, those are the things I see. And, and it's not even like a thing. I don't see a white man. I've never seen a white man as God. And so like a person um, who will show up is just not the way I think about God. And so after like doing my research on other religions and I, I had a friend who like exposed me to different books that are very vague, very weird, very spiritual that I felt was exactly what I needed because I was transitioning out of thinking very religiously, like late, late teens, early 20s, and feeling like I, I just need a different perspective. I just need something different. And when the student is ready, the master will appear. And it certainly has happened in my life all the time. I really never have to go looking for a mentor. They just sort of show up. One of the books that I looked into is called Zealots by Riza Aslan. It talks a lot about Jesus of Nazareth. He goes through a lot of historical documents. He provides a lot of evidence for the fact that Jesus was a living, breathing man who performed miracles, did things that no one else really has been able to do. Um, I guess it's a John. Listen. You know the Bible, you know the Bible. Um, but he, Jesus was a real person who did all those things that are in the Bible. I, I truly believe that. I really do believe that. And I think it's why I can call on Jesus because when his soul was here, he did profound, incredible things that really have no uh, explanation. And I'm at that place where, yeah, yo, I can believe everything that's in the Bible. Um, I can I can really say Jesus is the homie, love and cherish him, he's my friend, and leave out the part about like Christianity is the only way. I think that's like the only like hiccup I have with Christianity that 
y'all are like, if you don't do this, if you don't do it this way, you wrong. You wrong. And not only are you wrong, you're going to hell. You know what happens in hell? You die a thousand deaths every day in the fiery pit with the devil, Satan. And I'm just like, yo, calm down, okay? Really calm down. I have a whole video on heaven and hell and I really think there's states of mind. But you know what I think is the greatest part about all of this? Nobody knows for sure. Like, I don't know for sure. I know what feels right to me, like inside inside me, like what feels, you know, like this thing inside you that's like, aha, that makes sense. And the other thing that's like, that don't really make much sense. Like to me, it doesn't really make much sense. Like I have not hell. It doesn't really make, line of milk and I don't really, doesn't really resonate with me. I really think that the idea that your state of mind creates your own personal heaven or hell is where I'm at. And I could be wrong, but the thing I say is the way you choose to live your life can either bring you more joy or more suffering. And the way I'm living my life, if you cannot tell from the way I'm doing these videos, I'm living in joy. My life is so beautiful. It's so good. I am so happy. I'm so at peace. Everything is not perfect. But I think the way I choose to live and my perspective and my way of thinking and understanding myself in this world is that I love it. I love me. I love being here. I love being kind to people. I love love. Like, I love energy. I love calling on God. I love challenging myself. I love growing. I love looking at life as lessons that are here to challenge me and propel me on a trajectory of like, evolving versus then something else that would cause me to be depressed or or suffer from loneliness or despair or whatever like my thing is just listen you can live your life however you want to live it and it's taken me over 10 years to get to this space where i feel very comfortable about my perspective on jesus where i feel comfortable sharing it because my parents are still very religious and are not with all this whatever type talk <laughs> definitely with the me being a kind person but i i i really like the way i see things it makes really good sense to me i always love having these conversations with other people and you know people who are really open to discussing and finding out why someone else thinks the way they do or the details of what they think are like some of the best people to talk to because if all you're trying to do is convince someone that they should think the way you think you're no fun to talk to you're no fun and i'm not trying to convince you to think the way i think i just want to spark a thought or engage in discussion so leave a comment check the description box i'm gonna have a couple books linked down there that you may want to check out and thank you for watching You would never had a friend like me. There's a train. I do wonder where the train is long enough that people can put the graffiti on. I I wouldn't mind working that train. That would be a cool thing.